High school sports mean so much to Iowa and the communities we call home. They offer competition, pride, dedication, and teamwork. These are the same values our members hold and live by every day. As a title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, the Iowa Farm Bureau is proud to be a part of the state volleyball tournament. We believe in supporting our youth, both in competition and in the classroom. That's why we provide the Girls Union with grants, awards, and scholarships. We want all young Iowans to have a chance to excel in the academics, the arts, and athletics. By being involved in school activities, our children develop the foundation that will turn them into leaders, leaders that will continue to make Iowa a great place to live, work, and play. We'd like to congratulate all the players and coaches for a successful year, and we know that by investing in our youth, we're investing in Iowa's future. And we welcome you to the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena Iowa State High School Volleyball Tournament for 2011. An outstanding venue, kind of on somewhat short notice with all of the construction going on in downtown Cedar Rapids. The Girls High School Athletic Union decided we want to keep it in Cedar Rapids, so we're here. A little bit different than the U.S. Cellular Center, but so far it's turned out and we have seen some great volleyball so far. I'm Ryan Slater along with Barb Randall. Ken Stock also joining us here for the broadcast here today. It's been uh, some great tournament action with uh, coming up in a few moments. We'll have IS Iowa City West High School taking on City High. The 3A matchups will be uh, Bishop Heelan out of Sioux City. Waverly Shellrock coming up uh, taking on Heelan. And of course Western Christian in the 2A game. Dyke New Hartford and then Trapoa and Lamar's Galen Catholic for the 1A contest. Barb, uh, we've seen some great volleyball here. As I was mentioning here, it seems like all the kids, all the athletes, the coaches, everybody has been acclimated to it. It was a pretty good stuff. It's been a great tournament, and I'm getting rave reviews from all the fans and players. They like the closeness of the, of the gym, so hopefully it'll be another great day. All right, we'll talk more volleyball right after this. Farm Bureau does, it does for Iowa. Iowa Farm Bureau supports the people and the programs that support all of us. From farmers to community leaders to our youth, Iowa Farm Bureau strives to make our state the best it can be. you were going? Download pictures, music. Man, he's got moves. Even videos. All at amazing speeds. <laughs> Break the internet speed limit with Imon's Freedom 15 high-speed internet service for only $34.98 a month for 12 months. Hurry, this is a limited time offer. Call Imon today. You know, they've got everything I need. Best of all, it's all right here. Simple and easy to use. Banking on the go. They've got what I need to help me keep my business moving forward. And they're willing to work together with me. They work together with us to make sure that we can enjoy our retirement. Community Savings Bank. Working together with you. With Barb Randall and Ken Stock, Ryan Schlater from the Ice Arena in Cedar Rapids for the State Volleyball Tournament. Let's go over to Ken Stock, who's joining us over here, and we're getting ready for the starting lineups here as well, Kent. But uh, it's just a great venue here for uh, Iowa High School Volleyball. This is Class 4 a Championship match. Now let's meet the teams. First, the visiting team on the scoreboard, the Iowa City. Well, we're going to go to Ken here in just a few moments. Let's uh, take a look at our starting lineups here with City High and Iowa City West. No. 
Number 14, Ashley Gonzalez. Number 15, Aliyah Gustafson. Number 16, Emily Kopnick. Your assistant coaches, Trisha Cardi and, the, and Sarah Dolson. Now let's meet your starters for City High. Number four, Abby Saylor. Number seven, Aaron Muir. Number eight, Caitlin Ward. Number nine, Liz Hubing. Number 10, Rachel Reinhardt. Number 18, Michaela Nelson. The Libro is number six, Laura Shepard. The head coach is Craig Pitcher. Now the non-starters for your Iowa City West Women of Troy. Number two, Carolyn Hartman. Number four, Hannah Fairfield. Number six, Hannah Harless. Number 10, Aaron Weathers. Number 14, Lainey Whitehead. Number 15, Emily Mertinger. Number 16, Lynn Yaley. Number 17, Emily Carpenter. Your assistant coaches for the women of Troy, Scott Sanders and Ashton Stelkin. Ladies and gentlemen, now your starters for the Iowa City West women of Troy. Number three, Molly Mason. Number five, Hannah Infeld. Number eight, Olivia Mekis. Number 11, Shelly Stump. Number 18, Olivia Fairfield. And number 19, Kelly Fleeler. The, the libero is number one, Anna Pashkova. The head coach is Kathy Brezhnehan. Ladies and gentlemen, your officials for today's match, line judges, Sean Angel. Line judge, Kent Kashur. The first referee is Jay Grassley. The second referee is Gene Statlander. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we stand in gratitude to honor those who serve. Ladies and gentlemen, the members from the Cedar Rapids Xavier High School Extracurricular Ensemble, Bodiche, under the direction of Jeff Bieber. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our plan was still there. Oh, say No, no kid. Nice. And we're getting closer to the start of Iowa City West and uh, Iowa City City High. Take a look at Iowa City West here this evening, uh, uh, Barb Randall. I tell you what, it's been an up and down season for Iowa City West, but still managed a 38 and 6 record. A lot of talent here taking on City High, a team that they've beaten twice. City High, though, only three losses. That's right. Iowa City West <laughs> lost their setter. Uh, just a couple weeks before the season started and so they've been playing the season for Caroline found and in fact because of that had to put a player who's not usually a setter into the setting role and they've done remarkable remarkably well 
with that transition, which is which would be an, a hard transition to make to become a setter all of a sudden. Can't talk enough about Craig uh, Pitcher and what uh, excuse me <clears throat> what he has done here for the uh, Little Hawks. So once again, uh, trying to get that uh, championship. It would be the uh, third championship as they're into the state tournament for the 11th time. It's one thing when we talk about Class 4A rivals from opposite sides of the state. And when you have a couple of teams out of the same conference battling it out, but the same, same school city. district, yeah. uh, that tells you about how important volleyball really is to Johnson County. That's right. They love their volleyball. And I think this is, you know, I think we may have most of Iowa City down here rooting for it half and half. And uh, it should be an exciting match because there are more rivalries built into this than anyone probably can imagine. All right. And we get set for the start of uh, this morning's volleyball. One of four that we're going to have for you here today and it is the Little Hawks going to be starting off uh, serving out the volleyball and it's Iowa City West a quick a dump over by the three meter line they set up the offense on the left side a nice dig out of there by Molly Mason they'll try and attack on the left side again good defense for the Little Hawks and that one goes down just off the hands of Olivia Meckes and a point number one goes to the Little Hawks of City High. Nelson did a nice job that time for City High hitting the ball between the blockers hands what we call splitting the block. Caitlin Ward defensive specialist another serve she'll go right down the line too long it's out of bounds. That may be a little bit of nerves but these teams have been here so often that I'm sure they're they're somewhat used to playing under high stakes. Anna Poshkova. The Libero, here they set it off to the left side. They'll try the down the line, it hits the antenna. Seemed just a little bit off on the swing. I didn't think that Abby Saylor really had the right angle that time. Well, and Saylor is usually a middle hitter, so they were probably just trying to confuse the defense a little bit by having her hit outside. Uh, but unfortunately, the set was just a little far outside and she hit the antenna, which is considered part of the line and is out. Stump, couple of consecutive swings. That time, she had a great angle on it. Went for the left quarter, dumps it over. And Iowa City West up 3-1. The winner, Troy. Here's a serve toward the back row. A nice pass out of there by Michaela Nelson. And here's West on the attack. They'll go right down the middle, tries the corner, and just a little bit too long on the swing for Abby Saylor, the junior middle hitter. And Iowa City West on a roll, four to one. This is good for Iowa City West to get off on a, on a smart start here. It's, yeah, anytime you can get a lead, even of a few points, it's a great start. Then you can start playing side out volleyball and make sure that you get a point every time they get a point. They set it off left side again, a Shelly Stump. Well, and this is a special day for Stump. if if pregame was anything the whole West contingent here saying happy birthday to her so I have a feeling it may be her birthday today get you fired up a serve just off of the hands of Anna Pushkova for Iowa City West the women of Troy and for the Little Hawks down by a point here early on 4-3 pass by Meckies Dug out of there, then they'll try the set going back off to the left side and off the tip and down. The kill by Rachel Reinhardt, the junior outside hitter, leads the teams entering the tournament. Or second, I should say, for City I with 270 early on. Got a nice swing from the outside, and we're tied up. Quick pass in the back set. They go off in the tip, almost a lift, but doesn't matter. The shot goes out of bounds. So even on, doesn't feel like any particular team here has a lot of a, uh, momentum here. That one goes off and a point for Iowa City West. 6-4 Iowa City West on top of City Eye. And the jump serve. The back set. Double block there by Iowa City West. They come back. They'll set it right toward the middle. Swing taken by Olivia Fairfield. Dug out of there. However, Iowa City, City Eye just not able to maintain it and knock it over. So that's uh, Iowa City West again, leading it 7-4. to four. I have to say, City High is looking a little flat today. When they played Ankeny yesterday, they were on. And they need to get their passing going because... 
they need to get Taylor going in the middle. That was one of the keys yesterday against their in their semifinal match against Ankeny was they she was on and, and they were rolling and passes were great and the setter had all sorts of choices. So and that time just couldn't get a proper set that time and now we have a timeout for Iowa City West, the women of Troy leading City High by the margin of eight to four. So as soon as I say, oh, no particular right. team has a little bit of momentum here, uh, City High, a couple of hitting errors. Well, you know, the, the announcer jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Started early today. Quite familiar with that. But it, if I were Craig Pitcher right now, I'd be talking about, hey, you know, just relax. Yes, it's a state championship, but just relax and play your game. I and mean, they have a lot of weapons they can use. They, even if even if they don't have a great pass, they can throw it outside to Reinhardt or Hubing. I mean, they can put the ball down. They they did a great job with that yesterday against Ankeny. And just relax and play your game. Make sure that you're moving, you're touching every ball, and they'll come around. A battle of the spike won by the women of Troy early on. I like seeing those little Hawkeyes. We need all those little kids to wear little Hawkeye shirts go. and grow into Hawkeyes. Another jump serve, much better pass. They set it to the outside. Yankees, nice dig from the back row. They'll swing it. Ooh, another dig out of there by the City Island Little Hawks. Kate Reward able to set things up, but a little bit too long, and that's Iowa City West. Another point, leading it by five, nine, four. And that time, Reinhardt was just a little bit under the ball, so it went up first before it went down. The key is to keep the ball out in front of you so you're extended and you're hitting the ball the trajectory trajectory starts down. Shelly Stump, net serve. The Little Hawks back with it. Rachel Reinhardt, quick set toward the middle, pounded down. Olivia Fairfield, the middle hitter. That was a great swing by Fairfield. West had the three blockers up. There was a hole in the block, but there were three blockers up, and the back row defense couldn't do anything about it. Fairfield had her way with them that time. Comes in second for Iowa City West with a number of kills. There's another point for the women of Troy. And a six-point margin, 11-5. Right now, to me, it just boils down to passing. City High just needs to get a pass, play their game. That's a good pass. They Leelard. can run the middle. They run the quick, and there's a put away by Abby Saylor. And Saylor, when she's on, she gets fired up. She's a fun player to watch. And Sailor to serve it from the right side. Charges, floats that one out. Oh, and for the women of Troy, it just looked like Molly Mason backpedaled, had to two-hand push it. Well, and the, that rule has changed some in the past year. You can now contact it and have a double contact on the first, on the first contact, but you can't lift it. And that mm -hmm. time the official, Jay Grassley, who's a, a tenured official, he knows what he's doing up there, uh, saw a lift. You can't lift it. The margin is three for the Little Hawks. And for Sailor. There's something going on with the... Coach Bredne Bresnahan talks to the floor official and does some pointing up top. Not sure what the, what the problem is. Looks like maybe they have a rotate out of rotation or, or something, but not sure. And we're way across the other side of the court, so we can't hear them. Need to mic the coaches. How about that? Yeah, that well, <laughs> <that'd be> dangerous. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think the coaches would be very gung ho. Especially Brez. <laughs> must have been. They must have been confused about who was supposed to be next server or that kind of thing to know their serve receive rotation. That was close. Just barely crosses the end line. That is a side out in Iowa City West with Olivia Fairfield. Back with the serve. 35 aces entering the tournament. Substitutions coming in here for the Little Hawks. And it's too long. That ball looked like it caught an air current or something in here. It was a floater anyway, but uh, it did look like it kind of caught an air current and took off. Well, you talked about nerves, and usually it's on the passes or it is on these serves, and we're seeing a little bit of the uh, 
serving errors so far. Here's a dump over for Molly Mason, dug up by City Eye. Here's a double block by the women of Troy. The back set. Here's a swing down the line, off the, cooled off the block and down. Thought they covered it up, but I think the Little Hawks had a nice angle. And Michaela N Nelson does a nice job on the right side out there. She's a sophomore, and she's, um, her sister actually plays at UNI. So she's got some, some good bloodlines in her family. Molly Mason had to go charging, couldn't dig it up. And another serve as ace for the City Eye Little Hawks makes it 12-11 in favor of Iowa City West. This one is floated and passed by Pushkova. They'll set it off left side. Nice angle for the women of Troy, and that one is put away. Hannah Enfeld, the senior. Great cross-court angle on that. It's, it's always nice when you can get either in the three meter line or 10 foot line as we call it, or just behind it. That's a nice sharp angle, hard to defend. 13 to 11, Iowa City West over City Eye. They set it off down the left side. That one goes out. Nice idea, she had the right idea going down the line. The line was open. Just a, the ball went a little bit wide on that one. Nelson too hard perhaps on the forearm there. And came out to the near side. Here's a quick back set. A oh, double hit called on the Little Ox. So we talked about how you can have a double hit on the first contact, but you can't have it on the second or third contact. Molly Mason back with the serve. Four point margin for Iowa City West. The pass, the underhand set goes offside. And for Iowa City West, Molly Mason just not able to grab it cleanly. And now the Little Ox, you have the Libero. And at Laura Shepard. Pass by Mason, they set it down toward the middle. That's Enfeld, just a soft hit. Here comes City High, back the other way. Pushed over the quick set, they go off to the left side. City High. Nice hustle by, by Whitehead. Almost into the tables on the side of the of the court there, but you know, and that's all that's all you need to do to get back into the game is keep getting touches and keep getting touches, and eventually you'll get to the point where you're feeling comfortable and can play your game. Dumped over by Enfeld. They go quick. Tried to get the angle. That one appeared to be blocked, however, nicely off the uh, carom that time for City High. She just pounded it. That's right, and that's what we call a tool. Um, using the block, and, and there are outside hitters that are fabulous at doing that, and some of them, that's how they get their kills, because if you can use the block and keep it on your side of the net, but out of bounds, the other team can't get to it. Whereas if you go off the hands and it stays on the other side of the net, they can still get that ball. And are tied up 15. Shepard, Mason, they go opposite side. Off the Caramon stump shot, and the lift. Give it to Iowa City West. So here comes Olivia Meckes, senior defensive specialist. Nice floater. Nice floater passed up by Hanchi of the Little Hawks. They go off left, pushed over by Pashkova. City Eye, they try the quick. That one is blocked, but too far. Well, and we could talk a little bit about the different kind of serves. Um, basically, you can have a floater or a spin serve. Um, the most common type of spin serve is a, is a top spin serve, but there are also people who have, been, who have gotten pretty good at side spins. Basically, the toughest serve to pass is a floater because you don't know where it's going. For, for you baseball fans out there, it's like a knuckleball. It just moves in the air or it can catch an air current and just can kind of move. You can think you're in perfect position to pass it and it can rise up on you and then you you know, you know get a lift on it. For a, top, for a spin, any kind of spin, it doesn't matter what kind of spin it is, it's easy to pass, but it comes at you so much faster, it's, sometimes it's harder to get to and it always looks more, more wowy. It's more glamorous because it comes so fast. But to pass a spin serve, all you have to do is get behind the spin. So if it's a top spin, just get your arms under it. And if it's a side spin, get your arms behind, behind that spin. So there's my spin, <laughs> my, my serve directory. 
Well, that time we saw Abby Saylor just try to angle it. Iowa City West recovers. They're over to free ball it over on the left side stump. Whoop. Double contact on yep. that. And an 18-17 lead for Iowa City West. The Little Ox with the serve. And serving it, Michaela Nelson. They run the quick. It's pounded off by Olivia Fairfield. Point, Iowa City West, leading at 19-17. It looks like City High is trying to mix up West's offense by serving them a little short, kind of close to the 10-foot line, three-meter line, um, which can throw an offense off because that's kind of in the pattern the, the hitters take for their, for their approaches. And the hitting air goes too long to the outside. Well, you see City High and the coach Richard here, he's trying to utilize all of the court, go on the opposite side, but right now they're just not finding the angle. They're hitting it too long. Well, and you see, we talked about the serves. Stump is a perfect example of a, of a spin serve. It's a top spin serve, and it looks really pretty. It's a nice hard hit jump serve. She has a lot of power behind it, and it looks really pretty. I'm not sure what the... Oh, that time, uh, we can talk a little bit about that. What happened on that ball was the West player contacted the ball when it was on the plane of the city high side. And you can't touch the ball unless it breaks the plane of the side, breaks the plane unless it's an attacked ball. If it's an attacked ball and you're blocking it, that's the, that's the exception. 21-18, the women of Troy trying to win this first set. Back and forth here out. Here they send it off to the right. That one put away Abby Saylor. That's a slide play, and that's for any basketball players out there. The approach for that is, is a lot like a layup. You take off one foot. Um, it's, it's hard to block that, so when you're running an offense, it's nice to throw some slides in because it is a very hard ball to block. That one trickled off the antenna. And unfortunately for the women of Troy, Laney Whitehead, uh, the freshman backpedal, just didn't know how that one was gonna carry him off the tape. So City High down by a point, net serve. And Iowa City West by two, 22-20. And for people watching that, that may not have seen volleyball for a while, volleyball used to go to 15 and it used to be scored, whoever served got a point. And now it's anybody who wins the point gets a point and it goes to 25, you still have to win by two. Um, so it, this first game is a tight one, and, and they still have to win by two, but whoever gets the 25 first wins. We've had only one timeout by these teams, taken by City Eye, and then so far back and forth. Pashkova, they set it. Fleeler goes off to the left side on the set. That one is put down, City High again. Another example of using a block, but that time <laughs> stayed on west side and, and nobody was there to pick it up behind the, the blockers. We had a good angle on that one. That one started to curve around as it was uh, passed by Pashkova. So now here are the Little Hawks with a 23-22 lead. And now the women of Troy take a timeout. And probably a good timeout. You get here later on in the first set. You can't be making any mistakes. There's really not a lot of give and take that you can do here. Maybe early on you might let a few things go on here, but uh, City Eye just a couple of points from winning it, and Iowa City West just, just hanging right there. Well, and West had a tough match yesterday in the semis against Cedar Rapids Kennedy. And to the point where I wasn't sure that they were going to be able to pull it out. They, they gained their composure back, and and we're able to pull it out. But here's that, here's a replay from that last play where Michaela Nelson just uses the block and goes off the hands of the blockers. But West had to regroup themselves in that semifinal match. And so it'll be interesting to see how they come out today because I know they didn't want their season to end before this match. They all following the timeout. City High returns to the floor first. They put the floor on top of the ice here in the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena. A little bit chillier here, but with more folks coming in, it warms up. They tried the back set. And that time it just uh, seemed like the execution just 
Very poor for the women of Troy. It looks to me, even on both sides, it looks like people are having trouble getting their feet to the ball. And in any sport, the key is get your feet to the ball. So no matter if you're in any skill in volleyball, no matter what you're doing, you have to get your feet to the ball or you're going to have have some issues. And so they just need to work on getting their feet to the ball, both sides. So City High a point away from taking the first set in this Class 4A state championship game. Craig Pitcher visits with his City High squad, and I'm sure he's telling him, look, let's get this one. I mean, so many close matches that we've seen here at the state volleyball tournament. I mean, just look at uh, what the Little Hawks did to start off. 26-24, 26-24, 22-25, 25-23 against Ankeny. It was close all the way throughout. And then here, finally, the timeout, and that serve. Good, good timeout, Coach Bresnahan. <laughs> That's why you do that. Molly Mason to serve. They set it and they go opposite. Nelson, it's dug up by the women of Troy. That one's just pounced over by Stump. City Eye, another opportunity to the right side. And Nelson just tried to angle it over. And she able to got that one through. And now another timeout on the floor. Nope, that's the game. 25-23, the uh, Little Ox from City Eye. They'll take the first one, the teams will switch off. And we'll be back right after this for set two. Farm Bureau does, it does for Iowa. Iowa Farm Bureau supports the people and the programs that support all of us, from farmers to community leaders to our youth. Iowa Farm Bureau strives to make our state the best it can be. Dentistry of the future will be convenient, affordable, and comfortable. The future of dentistry is at Blair Ridge Dental. You could say we have an app for that. Now we can demonstrate dental procedures, illustrate the necessary steps, and discuss payment options before sitting in a dental chair. There's no magic pill for dentistry. Our fusion of technology and phenomenal patient care creates the future of total dental health. Right here, right now. Blair Ridge Dental, the future of dentistry. In choosing a college, it's important that you make a good choice for your future. Connect with 29 private colleges and universities at thinkindependently.com. Think. Graduation in four years. Think. Affordable education. Think. Think. Personalized instruction in small class sizes. Be a person. Not a number. Think. Think. Leading the pack. Not following. Take charge. Think quality. Professors, facilities, equipment, and technology. Think. More real-world experience. Grab the facts at thinkindependently.com. Begin your future today. We're at the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena, the women of Troy, and the City High Little Ox. Glad you could join us here on KCRG Weather Now and KCWI. As we take a look at some photos from the Gazette in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> Just kind of tells you the, the jubilance after every point, and every point is so crucial here. It seems almost uh, cliche, but I think with that 25 to 23 win here for City, I mean, you can make the argument that wasn't the prettiest set that we've ever seen in volleyball. It certainly wasn't, but the, the key is for City High, hey, we got one. You know, now they maybe can get a little bit more into the ryth their rhythm, play their game. Um, you know, they haven't beaten West yet this year. And so um, I'm sure Coach Pitcher talked about, you know, getting this next game. Uh, but those pictures, my understanding is you can, if you like those pictures, you can go uh, and order them and, and purchase them. So 
Check out thegazette.com for that. The Gazette, the Gazette.com is the website. We're ready for set number two. Team switch off. You can see the Iowa City West Trojan players in their blue t-shirts. They had the warm-ups and of course, Iowa City West, uh, the student sections. Live like line. And we'll get a chance to talk with more about how this season has been so instrumental and very emotional for Iowa City West with uh, the death of a Caroline Found. Died earlier this year in a moped accident just prior to the season. And that one's put away by the City High Little Hawks. Great line shot by Reinhardt. Uh, West was playing player back defense, which means the corners are open, and that was a great shot by Reinhardt. Caitlin Ward, senior defensive specialist. Leeler goes off to the left side. There's an attempt and put away. Shelly Stump. What's good for the Goose is good for the Gander. Another, another down the line shot. Uh, that was a player back defense where the line defender is about 20 feet in the court. So if you hit that deep corner, hard ball to defend. Stump's had some pretty decent swings here, but on several occasions, City High's been right in line there to block. Little Hawks able to attack. They'll go back off to the left side. That one deflected by a Reinhardt shot. Pushed over the net. The quick set down the line. And too long on the swing by Abby Saylor. Saylor's just a little off on her angles. Those sharp angles are hard to hit. She'll get those. Those are normal, those are normal things for her. She'll get those. We saw a lot of that last night, or yesterday when she was hitting them actually on the line. Hard ball defense. 3-1, West. They set it off to the left. That one's pounded and dug up nicely by the Libero for the Iowa City West. Women at Troy, Koshkova. Back to the Little Hawks. Set, they go off left side. And that one is put down. Boy, looked like the women at Troy for a moment there was out of position, but Enfeld, she just looked, and that was a vision shot. That was a vision shot. She didn't have to hit it hard. She probably saw in her per peripheral vision that City was a little bit strong on the left side of the court, so she hit it to the right back corner. City High, they tried the attack on the right side, backpedaling, and dug out by the women at Troy. Nice block of the net that time. That pretty much uh, put Iowa City West out of rhythm. Michaela Nelson helped on that block in the near side corner along with Abby Saylor. Well, blocked balls are some of the hardest to get a touch on because they come back at you so fast, and most of the times you're not really expecting it. Yeah, you're in coverage position down low, and you act like you're ready for it, but usually you're, you're just not quite ready for it, and it's so fast, and then you just have to stick an arm out sometimes. Nelson down the line, Fleeler sets it off left. That one dug out, and I thought she was gonna free ball it over. She smacks it over. Here come the women at Troy. Off the tape, back for the City High Little Hawks. A swing taken on the left side. Reinhardt can't put it down. Another chance for the Little Hawks. Staying with it, but the Little Hawks with the point. Well, it looks like the teams are getting a little bit more comfortable, getting into their rhythm a little bit, and starting to play their games. Getting defense into the mix, that always helps. Nelson, the sophomore. Get over on three. The quick set. Just over the outstretched block. Iowa City West recovering. And that was was launched over. Didn't want to just smack it off the block. Oh, you can see that one coming. <laughs> Shelly Stump puts it away. Great heads up play by Stump. Everybody for the City High team had kind of rushed to the net to help. And the ball had just trickled over the net. And she put it deep in the court. Libero, Anna Pushkova. Oh, the overpass put down by Stump. She's having herself a pretty good championship match so far. 
on her birthday. Well, we think. <laughs> we have every reason to believe when you start singing happy birthday and you start bowing. Yeah. Too long in the swing, out of bounds it goes. And Iowa City West up by three. The Little Hawks only three losses, both times to Iowa City West, as well as Western Christian on a two to one. Western Christian, we'll see them a little bit later on today. And that is just a, a miscommunication right there. What should have happened? Reinhardt is an outside hitter. The Libro was standing there. Reinhardt should have just been screaming at her, mine, 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 because hitting the ball over the net is something that Reinhardt is a specialist at. Shepard and Reinhardt. Nice cover. They go off left. That one smacked down by Reinhardt. Dug up by Iowa City West. And it'll be free balled over by Fairfield. West, they'll try it. Off the block and down. Point for the Little Hawks. Coach Bresnahan comes on out to the court. Has a few words to the far side. And with the serve, the Little Hawks. Wheeler. And that one's put away. Olivia Fairfield. Nearly three kills per set. 2.93 entering the 2011 State Volleyball Tournament. Jumped over on two. Here comes Iowa City West. They run the quick off the block. Put nice. down, and that was a point for City Eye. Great defense by the Little Hawks. Well, great hustle by West. I mean, once you see your teammate going and just getting a touch on the ball, that becomes contagious, and pretty soon the next person does that, and the next person does that. Pretty soon you get the ball over. And a lift is called. So now to serve it up, it will be Abby Saylor. And Saylor charges in down the line. The pass by Pushkova. They go to the back set. On the run. Back to the near side. And that one. Kept alive for a moment, but the Little Hawks will get the point. City I winning the first set, 25-23. Wheeler, too long. I'm kind of surprised in this day and age, I, I, we've talked about serving a little bit, but in this day and age, most servers have gone to topspin serves and jump serves with topspin, and we really only have one server serving topspin here today. Most of them are serving floaters, which I actually think is a better strategy. Um, floaters are way harder to pass, and in an arena like this where you have all kinds of air currents, you never know where it's gonna go. West 10, City I 9. City I in the red jerseys, the Kelly Green for Iowa City West. Mason gets the point, and it's West 11, City I 9. Loaded up, that's passed by Hanchi. However, Hanchi, I don't think, uh, steered it the way that you wanted to on that one. Well, and again, to me, it looked like that was the float of the float serve taking place. She was in pretty good position, and then the ball just moved at the last second. Fairfield, they run the quick. There's a swing by by Gustafson. Well, and that's a lucky break for City High because that ball was sailing out of bounds, but they called West in the net. And anytime the ball is being played up by the net, no player can be in the net. Liz Hubing, the junior. They go off to the right side. That time the Libero for Iowa City West. Anna Pushkava let that one go. Libero is, uh, I've argued with some people about that. I prefer Libero. Sometimes the term is libero. The Girls High School Athletic Union actually has it in their regulations. They prefer Libero, but 
different pronunciations for that. Kind of depends on what kind of volleyball you play. Well, and it's, it is kind of funny. They, they do say that either term is correct, but it does come from the Italian word meaning free, which the Italians pronounce it libero. So we've kind of Americanized it to pronounce it libero. So you'll hear it either way. In both ways, um, they've said are correct, but I also I also do prefer the, the pronunciation libero. <laughs> so I'm glad to finally be working with someone who, pr who prefers it that way too, because a lot of times I try and, and change to whoever I'm working with so that we don't sound dorky. They're always, easy, sound dorky. they're always easy to spot on the court. They wear the opposite color jerseys as the teammates. Well, and the position is actually a defensive position. When they changed all these rules a few years ago, it was probably 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly which year it was, but they were trying to make volleyball more TV friendly because you could have a match in the, in the old rules, you could have a match that lasted half an hour or you could have a match that lasted two and a half hours and television could not plan for something like that. So to get more awareness, they, they changed the rules to try and make it so that the matches were more uh, consistent, in a consistent length. So they changed it to rally scoring, 25 points a game, and then they were concerned with um, just having to be kill, 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 and not being fun for spectators to watch. So they added the Libro position as a defensive position, a defensive, defensive specialist who gets to be in the game pretty much all the time. And there are some special rules for that, but I think I've done enough talking for now. <laughs> Six kills by uh, Reinhardt as we have Iowa City West. There's a dump over by Fleeler. Here's an attack. They slide over to the right side. That one is blocked. Sailor tried to swing, and you know what? I, I talked to coaches. I remember in the late 1990s when they decided, let's make the fifth set rally scoring. And some coaches just hated it. You battled it out, and then you're going to do the last one rally. And now everything's rally. I think everybody's adjusted to it. Everybody likes it. And I think the libero has added more to the game, I, I, especially from the participation standpoint. Well, and the other thing of, about that is I'm a traditionalist. I didn't want it to change. But since it's changed, one of the reasons I didn't want it to change was because I thought it would take the comeback aspect away from our sport. I think our sport is unique in that. Um, we, you know, it's not timed. So it can take as long as, it, as, as you can to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting until somebody wins by two points. But it really has, has proven we still have that comeback aspect. And so that, that keeps our game unique. An angle taken by the Little Ox. That was Hubing. Hubing, two and a half kills per set this season. And that's her second one here today. And a timeout. We're tied up at 15. City I, Iowa City West, 15, 15. Iowa City West, victories over Abe Lincoln on a Council Bluffs in three. Had a great battle with Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Looked like Kennedy was going to make that. They made a great comeback down two sets to nothing. Came roaring back, but Kennedy couldn't get on track. Iowa City West took advantage of some things and ended up uh, advancing to the state championship contest. Well, and here's a, a look at that last play that we just saw before the timeout. As we see Craig Pitcher talking to his team about what's going on out there. Nice quick attack by Saylor and then a quick transition out to the outside for kill to middle back. And it looked like that time Iowa City West was playing more of a rotation defense, which opens up that middle back position. They're all set for the block in the side. It wasn't able to react when City I sent it out to the opposite side. So following the timeout at 15-15, City I is already up one set to nothing. Set down the line. Oh, that one's put away. Olivia Fairfield. You know, and I'm a former middle, so I really like the quick plays. I when when that can be executed well, it's beautiful. And high school teams do such a good job of, of exploiting that more than they used to when we were when you know when I was playing, which was quite a while ago. But it's it's so nice to see that that run well, but it has to start with a pass. Aaron Muir, the senior setter, has had some really good sets in this set. <laughs> you can say that five times fast. Yeah, I don't know if we can. I think we'll be saying that a lot here today. That one's put away. Well, and you can tell by the way City High is setting up their defense. They're trying to force West to go down the line. They had the block moved way inside. They gave a lot of line, and um, 
West took advantage of that. A pass from the ground, and that one just a bullet out of bounds by Hubing. Well, that time she just, again, got a little bit behind it more than on top of it. The set was maybe a touch low for where she would, you know, where it would be ideal for her, and she just couldn't quite get on top of it. Trying to slide out of the right side. Nice block on the attempt by Eli Gustafson. Pitcher's going to take a timeout after that one. Probably a good timeout. Down 19-16. Little momentum swinging the other way. Craig Pitcher, 16 years of coaching in his career. 10 at City High. 11 times the Little Hawks have made it to the state volleyball tournament. I mean, the Little Hawks, victories over Cedar Falls. And then, uh, most recently, Ankeny. Nelson had 16 kills in that one. Hubing Sailor with 14 each. And here's a, a little bit of the Ankeny match from yesterday, the semifinal match. I tell you, City High, they were on all cylinders. They were just hammering the ball from all positions, and it was, it was a great match. Every game was tight. Yeah. It's one thing when you look at the score and think, oh, they won three sets to one, but you look how close in proximity yeah. the scores were. Any of them could have gone either way. Two 26 to 24 sets, a 22-25, and went in the last one 25 to 23. Just a couple of points separated advancement into the finals. Ankeny had an outstanding season. West serving, they set it opposite side. There's a wind up and a swing by Hubing. And that one's put down, and the Little Hawks get within two points. Well, and I'd be remiss to talk, to not talk about the assistant coaches. A lot of the assistant coaches you see on these teams are former college players. Um, West has a former UNI standout, Ashton Stelkin. Um, I think uh, Trisha Carty on Craig Pitcher's team, I think she played. Um, Ankeny, we spoke of Ankeny, they have three assistant coaches who all played Division I volleyball. They have two from UNI, Sherry Vermeer and Brittany Larson, who used to be Britt Baker. And then um, they have Angela Beast, who is a Marion native, but played at Drake. So I think that really helps young players learn what, what it takes to get to the next level. And, and that's always fun to play against in practice, as well as you know some role models to talk to about what they need to do to get to where they were. Erin Mears had some great serves to bring a City High to tie this match at 19-19, set number two. West will try the left side. Caromed off the block of Nelson. I'll knock it over. Here comes Iowa City West. Pass for the back row to set off to the right side. Hits the antenna out of bounds. Nelson's having a little bit of a struggle with that tonight. It, it, I don't know. It, to me, it, lo it looks like the set's in an okay spot. It, it might just be her contact point, but um, she's just having a little bit of a struggle with that, and I haven't seen her struggle with that in previous matches. There's an ace there. Oh. It kept playing here, but the, uh, it gets loud. And they kept playing. Wasn't sure that the call was already made. Well, when in doubt, play it, because you don't want to not play it and have it still be in play. Pass nice by Hanchi. The set goes opposite side to the left. And for Iowa City West. The set was too long for Iowa City West. Now they have to play some defense. They'll keep it alive. And free balled over. For City Eye. They go the opposite side. That one's put away. Liz Hubing. I think uh, the women of Troy were thinking Gustafson was going to get an opportunity in the middle and set, instead they went opposite side. They went outside and left Hubing wide open with one block and hitters of the caliber that are playing in this match today, they're, they're most likely going to get a kill when they're up against one block. That one's put away by Rachel Reinhardt again, the junior. Another great Deep hit, it's, it's sharp cross court, but it's deep in the court in the last three feet of the court. If you're not over there defensively behind it, you're probably not even gonna get a touch on it because it's so hard to get behind a ball that's that deep into the court. 21-21. 
another close set. Well, and there's Coach Bresnahan. She's been in a few matches like this. She, uh, she's been coaching at Iowa City for over 20 years. And well, at Iowa City West for over 20 years. She took a break a couple years yeah. back and came back to coaching because the players asked her to come back. Uh, I think I think she uh, wasn't maybe planning on having it be this many years. Um, I think it's been five or six since they asked her to come back. But she does a tremendous job down there. The players love her. Um, she was telling us a story about practice uh, sometime this week. I don't remember exactly what day it is, but they do a theme practice every every couple weeks or something. It's actually something that Caroline found had kind of started. Okay, tomorrow's going to be tie-dye day or tomorrow's going to be neon day or whatever it is. So the players had a little fun with Brez this week, and they, they told Brez it's going to be cowboy day. So Brez, she didn't have any cowboy stuff. She goes out, Goodwill, finds cowboy stuff, and then she comes into practice, and she's the only one in cowboy stuff. They all dressed like her. So they had a little fun with her this week. <laughs> and she was a very good sport with it, too. Yeah, she is. Of course, Scott Sanders, the assistant coach, I think got picked on next. <laughs> they did. They call him Snow Pants. And he doesn't know why. Again, Caroline, Caroline found started that. And uh, so the next day they all came in Snow Pants. West 22, City I 21. The women of Troy with the serve. Try to get on a quick roll here. Try to end this one. They go Gustafson, blocked at the net. And it was put down by Hannah Enfeld. The middle hitter with a huge block that time. Entered the season second on the team with 84 blocks. And now a timeout on the floor with City Eye trailing by two. Well, and if you look at the faces of as they come off the floor, it's an interesting story to tell. It tells where the momentum is. I mean, City's kind of coming off slumping a little bit, and West is all fired up. But that's the great thing about volleyball. Momentum changes so quickly. City High not out of the set by any stretch of the imagination. Well, and that's funny. Um, when, when I was in school, everything was built around our school colors. And things have changed so much. Those were actually Iowa City West fans who their colors are green, but they're all wearing light blue and blue shirts. Um, and, you know, City's pretty much in red and white. But it, it's, it's interesting to see what colors schools are picking for their clothes. Nice rebound. No doubt about that one. Gustafson Leah Gustafson, in the junior, she's come off off the bench here. And well, and that's a, that was a great turnaround for her. She had just gotten blocked. She was feeling kind of bad about that. The setter has enough confidence in her to go back to her on another quick set, a three, what we call a three, about 10 feet away from the setter on a quick set, and she puts it down. That's that's good turnaround. Ward had a nice serve, so Iowa City West couldn't get into their offense. That one's hammered down. Oh, but free balled over by Iowa City West, the women of Troy. They set it off to the right side. Dug out of there by Fleeler for Iowa City West. Free balled over, but too long, and the Little Hawks get the point. Nice hustle by both those squads. However, the break goes to City Eye. First one to 25, wins the set, but you gotta win by two. Tough serve. Just clears the tape, that one's down. Well, and that was a tough serve, and it was just over the top of the tape. Even if it would have nicked the tape, with the rule change that happened 10 or so years ago, net serves, for all of you traditionalists out there, net serves are now legal, but that one, it looked like it was clear, just barely, oh, that one's not gonna make it. No, that one goes right to almost in her teammate's head, but they were down. Trying to do the same thing again. They were down 21-23, came roaring back, and were serving for the point to take the set. So we're back to Iowa City West. And I think both these teams are used to these tight. In fact, both of them had several 24, 24 games yesterday, sets yesterday. Oh, well, it was a nice dig by City Eye, and then it was put down by Shelly Stump. And now West serving for game point and into the net. <laughs> 25-25, floated over. They'll go opposite side, Stump pushes over. Backpedals over the block. 
Good job clearing it. Oh, miscommunication. I think maybe that time City Eyes uh, Sailor may have been anticipating a quick. Well, and it looked like it looked like they they were trying to get it to her, but it was just a little bit. Uh, the timing was off a little bit, and there was some backups. The outside hitter and the libero both went to try and, and get it over, but neither one of them. It's kind of a I'll, I, you take it, I got it type of thing. That time Iowa City West had a chance to take the set. City I gets the point, 26-26. Now we're in overtime. Getting a little extra action. Stump pounds it and down. Shelly Stump. Nine kills. Now West, a point away. The jump served by Stump. The pass, the overpass, pushed over the net. The serve. Back for Iowa City West. Wow. Nice swing down the line. The Iowa City West defense was there down the line. Just a great swing by Hubing. 27-27. Whoever wins by two takes set number two. A little miniature jump set that time. Well, the overpass put away by City Eye. Nice reach. That was a heads up play by Hubing up there. You know, she has to know the setter's front row. If that ball's tight, she's got to know she's jumping with it because as the setter's front row, if the setter's front row, she can send it over on that second contact. Nice serve by Sailor. Oh, a hitting error, and the Little Hawks take it. 29-27. Well, in Iowa City, City High, it, this is a new position for them. 29-27, 2-0 City High. You're watching High School Championship volley Volleyball on KCWI and KCRG Weather Now. They haven't... Are we still on? Jeff with Lasso ERV inviting you to check out our huge selection of travel trailers and fifth wheels by Coachman. We have a camper for everyone's wants, needs, and budget. And be sure to ask about our free outside storage. Your weekend getaway begins here with Lasso ERV. <laughs> <laughs> You should hear what you've been missing. In one hour, you can be hearing better. Better hearing is a critical part of everyone's lifestyle. Don't let a hearing loss steal yours. Call Bell Tone today. The right solution, guaranteed. You know, they've got everything I need. Best of all, it's all right here. Simple and easy to use. Banking on the go. They've got what I need to help me keep my business moving forward. And they're willing to work together with me. They work together with us to make sure that we can enjoy our retirement. Community Savings Bank, working together with you. New Pioneer Food Co-op, where local really means local. When we say our breads are baked locally from scratch daily, we actually mean we mix organic flour, salt, yeast, and water with time and care. We proof, shape, and bake the dough in our own hearth oven. We cool and check each loaf for quality. At New Pie, your standards are our standards. New Pioneer, keeping it real since 1971. At our Amber location, our certified technicians have over 50 years of RV experience. We also offer a wide range of pre owned fifth wheels, travel trailers, and more. Your vacation destination begins here with Lasso ERV. The City High Little Hawks, two games to nothing over the women at Troy of Iowa City West 25 23, 29 27. This is only our first match. This is the 4A. We got the 3As, the 2As, the 1As. The first two matches on KCRG Weather Now. The last two on KCRG 9.2. And of course, all of them on KCWI Des Moines. And 
Wow. Uh, City High and Iowa City West played exceptional in that second set. City High was able to finish. Much better second set. Um, and we talked a little bit before we had to go to break that this is a different position for City High. City High hasn't won two sets against Iowa City West this entire year. So this should be, you know, something that gives them a little bit of um, belief and momentum that, that maybe they can take this match. Well, I know when you're down two sets, doesn't mean it's over. Just think of all the teams that have ended up coming back and making a game out of number five. Well, and that's the great aspect of this sport, I think, is that, it, you know, it's, well, it's kind of, I guess, similar to tennis, too. You're not ever out of it unless you're, you know, that final point is scored against you. Well, Iowa City West already starting off at a couple of times now. Stump, nope. That's a point for City High. So 1-0. Leeler goes opposite side. Nice block. City Eye. It was Abby Saylor. Leads the team in blocks this season. And Saylor can get on a roll up there. When she's when she's got her her mojo going, so to speak, and she gets excited, she can get on a roll. Both offensively and defensively. Pretty good angle for Enfell, but City I was able to keep it alive back at the offensive end and Stump puts that one down. Nice play by West. They ran two quick attacks. Uh, and so the, the blockers almost have to make a, a choice in that case. And that's a hard choice to make because they're both coming at you quick and they're both, and you have to try and decide which one's going to it. Anna Pushkova. With the set, they go opposite side. That one's put down. There's that one, the setter for Iowa City West. Kelly Fleeler just mistimed it a little bit and jumped a little early and gave a wide open shot for the outside hitter, uh, Reinhardt. Three to one. The pass to the middle. Ah, oh, the overpass yeah, over put the away. Net. Oh, yep. She, the ball, and again, we, we had this call a little earlier. The ball has to break the plane of the net before a player on the other side can touch it unless it's being attacked. And that ball was not being attacked, so Saylor needed to wait until the ball broke the plane of the net. It's hard to do. <laughs> Send it off left side. That was blocked by Olivia Fairfield. City Eye, another attack, and that goes between a couple of West players at Stump. Hey, we got a souvenir right up here next to our broadcast area. Thought you got to keep it when it comes up to the... <laughs> Go to the opposite side. Boy, that was just hammered and a nice way to keep that one alive by Ward. However, goes for not and Iowa City West battles back 4-3. Now, I like, I like it when players are aggressive and I want players swinging the ball to send it over the net, but you also have to be smart about it. If you're not in good position to send it over in a tough, aggress aggressive manner, sometimes you just have to get it over the net. Give the kill to Sailor. Had a good angle on that one, and Sailor wanted to beat the block. Well, and that's spot. that's exactly what quick sets are, are meant to do. You get up early, right as the setter's getting the ball. The setter puts it in your hands, and you are up in the air before the set before the block can form. Pushed over by Olivia Fairfield, and a block of the net. No, <laughs> kept alive. How about that? That defense. time, yeah, no doubt about that one by Nelson. Well, and. Iowa City High is getting a lot of touches. They're touching everything right now, and that's what good defense does. It doesn't always have to mean a perfect up or a perfect play, but get in touches so the next person after you can get, get a touch, and then you can send the ball over and have another shot at it. The back set, Gustafson kept alive. Fleeler goes off, and the left-hander puts that one down, but it's dug out of there. White had a decent attempt, however. They'll try it again. This time they'll try the left side of the floor. Mason. Good D by City Eye. That one screams right through. Hannah Enfeld. Well, and that, that was really nice because when you 
are going back and forth and going back and forth and you're transitioning from defense to offense and defense to offense, you almost always get the kill if you can throw a quick set in there because you can beat the defense back to their positions. Augustuson came around on the slide and she'll put that one down. 5-5. Five, five. Officials here today, the first referee, Jay Grassley. Second referee, Gene Statlander. Line judge is Sean Angel and the line judge, Kent Kasur, here this afternoon from the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena in Cedar Rapids. Ryan Schlater, Barb Randall, Kent Stock, along for the broadcast here of four matches. City I-6, Iowa City West 6. So Molly Mason gets set for a toss upward. Gustafson, yeah, I think she got the <laughs> kind of, I think she almost had, uh, wasn't quite sure where she wanted to hit it. At right, the last time she just took a swing in the hitting area there, Iowa City West takes a 7-6 lead now. For the women of Troy. And Mason. Nice swing. No doubt. That Good was set a up line there shot. by Muir as well. Yep, and they've been having great success uh, with the line shots. And uh, that time, their right side hitter, who does a nice job on the left side, as we can, as we just saw, just got right outside the block and put it down bef before it could get to a back row defender. Three hits and over. That's all Iowa City West could do. It looks like Nelson's starting to get onto yeah. her her into her rhythm she had a, a few balls earlier that that were hitting the antenna and she was not quite her feet weren't quite to the ball and it looks like she's starting to get into her rhythm nice serve fourth in the tournament field with 3.38 kills per game is nelson as iowa city west ties it up at eight well and if i'm iowa city city high setter i'm going to nelson when we need a point even though she's a sophomore, you know, she can swing from any position and she does a nice job of, of putting the ball down. The back set. Right over the outstretched arms. Did it go through? Yep, it was in and it hit the floor before Iowa City West could get a hand on it. And she played it nicely over the block of Shelly Stump. It's a tough ball to to. to dig in the back row because it's, it's it's almost in slow motion. The ball just goes up and barely over the block. The blocker can't get back down in time to get their hands on it. And the back row defender is so far deep they can't get under it. That one's put away by Hannah Enfeld. You know, we mentioned Shelly Stump had a very solid first set. And the second one, she came on late. And I, I think this is something that uh, I think Iowa City West needs to do. Maybe there's a way to get Shelly stuff. It seems like when she has a momentum on her side, she really gets fired that's, up. That's exactly right. And she's in every play. I mean, she wants the ball. She's playing tough defense. She's, she's doing a great job. But they do need to use her to get this thing going. Who are the back set. And it's put away. Give it to Michaela Nelson. And Boy, that, just a sophomore. Yeah, they're going to have to, yeah. other teams are going to have to put up with that for two more years. That's right. And that time, you know, there was a hole in the block. The middle blocker for West didn't make it out there, left a hole, and Nelson took advantage of that hole. There's a kill by Abby Saylor, and it's 11 to 9. It's been close throughout. Yeah, I don't but, expect this to be over yeah. anytime soon. Nice swing. And a block. Oh, they're going to call four hits. On that one, it looked, from our it, from our perspective, it looked like there could have been a touch on the block, but the refs have a, a much closer mm -hmm. perspective. They can see what's going on. Didn't actually touch one of the blocker's hands, so when West played it again, it was four contacts. Fleeler has to backpedal to set up that one off to the left, and then Iowa City West knocks it over, and then able to take advantage, get the point. Stump will serve mm -hmm. it. Fiery jump serve. Little duel at the net that time and give the point to Iowa City West. And that's West just saying right back at you. You can, you can do something with an overpass and we can too. Well, 
set it left side, just right off the block and down. Again, it looks like Iowa City City High is trying to attack the line, and I don't know if, if you know that's what West wants, and so they're continuing to do that, but they're having success with it. West may want to consider you know either yeah. mo either moving the block over or making sure their defenders there. One of the things that when I coached, one of the things I would tell our back row defenders is. You know, when you're playing the sideline, get your foot on that sideline because you can use that sideline as another defender. If that ball is anywhere to the outside of your body, it's out if your foot is on the sideline. But if your foot is not on the sideline, you have to guess. Yeah, perhaps like in that instance, Fleeler yep. maybe could have moved over now. Maybe yep. they'll make that adjustment. Maybe, but that might be their game. You know, right. their game plan may be to, we want them to hit line because we think we can play defense there better than a cross court. Leeler serve just over the net. The back set quickly. It just trickles over the tape. Free balled over by Shelly Stump. They go off left. Deflected upward. And the left-hander for Iowa City West knocking it over the net. That's Laney Whitehead. That's nice a point try. for Little Ox. Yep. Again, getting those touches on the balls. That's going to fire Iowa City West up. And they're going to, you know, they're going to keep building on that. And that's, that's, that's how it gets started. It actually gets started with defense. With the lead of one. Well, she was still able to get a reasonably solid swing that time. Too long, point Iowa City West. Now, if we, if we see that, and just, you know, from what we've seen here so far today, we've seen City High hit a lot more balls out cross court you know, I would, if I were West, I would take more of that line and, and make them hit cross court until they can prove that they're going to consistently hit it in. Dumped over the net on two. And a lift is called in Iowa City West. Well, we talked about it, and it's just really neat when these teams, they know everything about each other. <laughs> everything. They played each other yep. throughout the season in the conference. And they face off to see who comes home with the state championship well, right? in the same school district. Yeah, and they've grown up together. They all know each other. They're all on club teams together. They know all each other's secrets on the court and off the court. I mean, there's there's everything's bare here. I mean, it's it's all out on the court, and that's that's the fun of a match like this. 11 tournament appearances for City High, 10 for Iowa City West. They expect to be in Cedar Rapids in November. That's dug out of there very well by Pashkova, the libero for Iowa City West. Pushed over the net, free balled over by Hanchi of City High. There's Stump. There's Stump and another line shot. And again, line shots are hard to defend because they come at you faster than a cross court shot does. Even if it's a hard hit ball, it's a shorter distance. Mason. The pass and Gustafson blocked at the net. This time they go off to the right side. Oh, good defense there by Limited Troy. They back pedal. That one's out. West is starting to get feel a little momentum. Their crowd's starting to get in it. It's kind of nice when you can start getting a couple points in a row, a couple good plays in a row, and you can get your fans into it. Mason, another serve. They set it off to the left. And that one is out. Yeah, the line judge making the call, and we could see him the spin and the rotation right. that was on its way out. Very close, and a timeout on the floor. City Eye with a deficit of three. You know, both, both coaches right now have a good opportunity to talk about this. Brez with Iowa City West, you know, her team's got a lot of momentum, but they also have a long way to go to, to get this match back to an even even spiel. So uh, she she just needs to keep them doing what they're doing and, and staying positive. There's that ball from that shot. It looks like it was in, but we are kind of on the line, and, and it was it was about a foot out. You know, and, and Coach Pitcher with Iowa City High, you know, he just has to has to keep them calm because they have not been in a position like this against West this year, and this is on a bigger stage. So I'm sure he's telling them, you know, just play your game, have fun out there, and, and it'll, you'll be fine. 
And you make a great point about the lines. I, mean, I think we're going to be watching how those line shots, because right now, you know, we're seeing Iowa City West you know, try to double up on that block at the far side, but they will see some more uh, of the opposite far side, near side passes. And try to set that up on the far. Here we go back with it. Iowa City West. Nice serve to quick Gustafson. One's tipped up, so Iowa City West with an attack. Stump pounds it. Point for the women of Troy. Well, and Stump had a basically a one-person block. There was a big hole between the middle blocker and the outside block that time. And again, a hitter of Stump's caliber is going to get a kill most of the time when they're up against one blocker. And for Mason. Oh, a call, a double hit on the set. You know, that's a hard ball to set. It's a tight pass to the net, and so you have to, as a setter, you have to try and figure out how you're going to uh, contort your body to get both hands on the ball at the same time and release at the same time. Hard ball, you know, those really tight balls to the net are, are tough to do anything with. Gustafson just tries to tip it over the net and dug out of there by Iowa City West. That one hits over by the three-meter line, and Iowa City West feeling it. Ryan, I think Coach Bresnahan may, may have heard you say, you know, get Stump into this match, or this set, because that's how they've been getting the momentum going. Coach Craig Pitcher takes a timeout. And I think five, which is our margin right here, that's been the biggest differential that we've seen here in the three sets so far. Ryan, I'm not sure where you grew up, but I, I counted as six as our margin, 21 to 15. I have my glasses oh. on today. I'm new for a new uh, prescription. New prescription. There you go. I just had to. I had to say it. I. I'm That's sorry one about that. of I many know. that you'll be having on I me know. here today. It's been it's been a fun morning already. <laughs> yes, but I just couldn't let that go. Well, it's going to be a great afternoon here with three more matches ahead of us. Well, then can I safely say six has been the largest yeah. margin for any team? Because it go. has. That's true. The fans are getting into it, trying to get their team to get to 25 first. And for Mason. Boy, Poshkova has had some nice digs out of there in this set. And the officials have a conversation. It'll go to Iowa City West. City, I thought that they had the block. Well, I didn't think it touched anybody's uh, hands on City High's side, but maybe Nelson off the tape and argue. off. Yeah, Nelson didn't argue, so or didn't act like it hadn't hit her hands, so it must have hit her. That one's floated over. That one's going to be difficult. And Gustus had just barely able to get that one off the outstretched hands of Hannah Enfeld, as well as Olivia Fairfield. So check that uh, Fleeler, I should say. 22-16, City High with the serve back. And for Stump. That time, that was you know, solid block. well, it was a solid block, and the interesting thing is they did move the block out a little bit on the line. So they did take away a little bit more line. There was still a little bit of line available if the set would have been pushed out that far. But there was, they did take a little bit of line away, and it had a solid block and nowhere for Reinhardt to go. Well, Stump didn't quite have the right angle, so she just had a nice push shot toward the far corner, down the line and through. Iowa City West, 24-16. Well, in... For anybody out there who is always, when you're when you're in a pinch and you don't know where to put the ball and you need a kill, which you always need a kill, don't you? Uh, go for those deep corners. You know, those deep corners are hard to defend and they're usually open. And Iowa City West will take it 16 to 25. 25 to 16, Iowa City West gets back into it. But City I still leads it two sets to one. We'll be back right after this. Yo, Adrian, I did it. You can't handle the truth. I'll be back. I'm melting. Here's looking at you, kid. If you like movies as 
much as me, you'll love this. Save big on I'm On Digital Choice TV plus Showtime. Get classic and blockbuster movies, plus groundbreaking series and DVR service, all for $50.98 a month for 12 months. Call I'm On today. Dentistry of the future will be convenient, affordable, and comfortable. The future of dentistry is at Blair Ridge Dental. You could say we have an app for that. Now we can demonstrate dental procedures, illustrate the necessary steps, and discuss payment options before sitting in a dental chair. There's no magic pill for dentistry. Our fusion of technology and phenomenal patient care creates the future of total dental health. Right here, right now. Blair Ridge Dental, the future of dentistry. In choosing a college, it's important that you make a good choice for your future. Connect with 29 private colleges and universities at thinkindependently.com. Think. Graduation in four years. Think. Affordable education. Think. Think. Personalized instruction in small class sizes. Be a person. Not a number. Think. Think. Leading the pack. Not following. Take charge. Think quality. Professors, facilities, equipment, and technology. Think more real-world experience. Grab the facts at thinkindependently.com. Begin your future today. <laughs> you should hear what you've been missing. In one hour, you can be hearing better. Better hearing is a critical part of everyone's lifestyle. Don't let a hearing loss steal yours. Call Bell Tone today. The right solution, guaranteed. Winters, only on KCRG TV9. Ryan Schlater, Barb Randall here at the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena, the Class 4A volleyball championship. Kent Stock also joining us for the broadcast. He'll be visiting with some folks uh, throughout the day. And Kent, what an outstanding venue that this has turned out here. Usually you'll see Cedar Rapids Rough Rider hockey and some other community events out here. And with the U.S. Cellular Center uh, essentially under construction, basically it's barren right here. The union said, let's try to find a way if we can keep it in Cedar Rapids. And I think uh, this has turned out to work out pretty nicely. It's turned out to be a great facility, and I'm looking forward to interviewing the events manager to talk about how he got it done, but what an awesome matchup today. You have two teams that know each other very well, and it's just like playing in their backyard. Uh, <laughs> it's been great to watch, and it's been an exciting match, and I look forward to seeing the fourth set here. Four that they're going to have here throughout the day. I mean, the fans, they're seeing the best of the best here. The union, the way they set up the brackets, they always try to get the best Serving teams at the West state volleyball tournament, and everything has worked out that we've seen some great tournament matches, and I think we are by far seeing it. You're seeing some, number one versus exactly. number two right here. All right, looking forward to talking with you and, and hearing some more from uh, many people that helped make this tournament happen and some of the big players throughout the 2011 volleyball season. So here in Cedar Rapids here today, the 4A game first, then the 3A game. Those are on KCRG Weather Now, and then the 2A and 1As on KCRG 9.2, KCWI, of course, all four in the Des Moines area. City High. Let's uh, recap as we do as we go in here into this one. They started off with a 2-0 lead. Iowa City West came storming back, didn't come out, and I think City High just kind of came out, or I should say ended a little bit flat, but here we go in fourth and still have the lead. Well, sometimes when one team ends flat, it's because the other team really pumped themselves up and got themselves going, and I think that West did that at the end of the last Set. And so it'll be interesting to see how City High responds to that because they have lost to West already twice this season. And so this would be their first uh, their first victory over West. So it'll be interesting to see if they can hold on to the, the lead. Oh, too long. Looks like for City High, Sailor had a good, you know, and I hate to be so cliche about it. It's hard to beat a team three times. It but, is hard, but it is hard to beat a team three times. You get that in your head that we can get them this time, we can get them right. this time, and... and uh. But, you know, there's a reason it's a cliche. Yeah, you know, because I mean, you sit there and think, do we do the same things that we've been doing that has been effective, or do we try something else knowing the other team may do something else? Right, and and that's part of, that's part of the whole strategy. Be, you know, am I strategizing too much? Am I moving too much? But basically, you still have to play your game, 
But by this point in the season, they should know which their best matchups are. You know, when I put, you know, Fleeler against, you know, this player, is that my best matchup? Or should I do Stump against, you know, I mean, so they should have an idea of what their best matchups are. And um, it, it, should, it should be, this should be the best that they've played each other. And so far, I think it probably is. And, and there's no doubt the kids will be deciding that. There's so many times if you... You can look at the X's and O's. You can look at the tape for hours upon hours. There just reaches a point. You know what everyone else has. You just got to play the game and adjust as the game goes on. Well, and that's it's kind of funny because um, I was listening to, I think it was the the Hawkeye huddle after the game last week, and it's, it's kind of like what the Iowa football team does. Everybody knows what they're going to do, but you got to try and stop it. You know, so basically volleyball is the same thing. You know what you need to do and you just need to play your game and for the most part you're going to win a lot of games if, if your game plan's good uh and so both of these teams just need to play their game and see what happens well if you have an outside hit like caitlin ward will you will win a lot of games she puts that one down and gives city high a one point lead at five four and for sailor for iowa city west a free ball over the net. There's the block. Credit that one to Olivia Fairfield. 125 blocks entering this state volleyball tournament of the season. And another fine year. Just so many contributors for both these squads, actually. Well, and it's nice for their setters to be able to have more weapons than just one one person. We've seen a lot of people get the momentum going for their team tonight, and it, or to I guess it's this morning. Um, and it's nice for the setters to have weapons wherever they look. Viewer set. Off the tape, and <laughs> that one trickled on the line. It's too bad when something like that happens because the players, they're ready for it. And then, you know, the, it hits the net and rolls along it. And then all of a sudden they're out of position. City I seven, West five. Mirror again, down the line of the serve. The pass, and for the outset, too long. Out of bounds, and point City I. The coach pressing a hand a timeout. Well, and I, I'm, kind of interested in this timeout because it seems kind of unbrez like so I, I don't know if she saw something that she didn't like or if she's trying to nip something in the bud but usually she doesn't take take timeouts this early in a set but, but maybe she's a little nervous about it like again Cedar Falls kind of off to a slow start she just let the game right. come to the players a little bit and it did but now maybe perhaps because we are in set number right. four maybe she knows they're playing city high Here's that last play again. Tip right off and it just kind of rolled along the net. Whereas, it, you know, if it wouldn't have hit the net and rolled along the net, then she would have been in position right there for her. All right, following the timeout. We'll see if it was a good timeout. Generally, we base that on if West gets the point or not. Right kind of a little game we play as announcers. Or if they lose the serve. That's right. Sometimes you try to ice the server. You miss the serve. Erin Muir gets off a nice serve. They set, they go opposite. Well, and down. Good timeout. You know, I, I do think that on City High, Muir doesn't pr probably get enough credit. She's kind of one of the unsung heroes. She stays in there and she battles. She has a tough serve. Uh, she leads the team well and, and she just kind of gets the job done and does what she needs to do and, and isn't flashy and that's probably why she doesn't get as much credit as she deserves. Now they'll call the double hit on Iowa City West. And that'll give it back to the City High Little Hawks leading by three. Trying to take the fourth set. They took the first two. But the women of Troy battle back. There's a pass by Molly Mason. They set it off to the left. Nice. Nice defense. You know, that's that's great hustle, great touches. Just the court ran out. You know, <laughs> we yeah, ran you out need of a space. longer court, yeah. no doubt. 
not sure how they, at that angle, how they would have sent it over the net. But, it, I mean, it just was, you know, right at the table. Yeah, almost fell on Dick Dirks, the clock operator over there <laughs> on the far side. Knock over his 25 packs of chewing gum he uh, brings to every match. Here we go off to the side stump, just able to dump it over. They back set it off to the right side. That one's pounded down by Michaela Nelson. Iowa City West gets it up, and they'll call the extra hit. And Iowa City West with a point. Well, and that, you know, talking about Dick Dirks, that probably is a nice lead-in for, for us to talk about all the people it takes to put on a, a, an event like this. You know, the, the state, the H Iowa High School Girls Athletic Union has a lot of people behind them, but they also have a lot of help from local people who are here four days, all day, all evening, into the late night sometimes, and it, it really it couldn't be done without them. So it's a, a great thank you to all the people who, who participate and help in this, in this event. Yeah, Kent Stock will be visiting with some folks about that a little bit later on, but you're right, they put in double the hours, just had to do things a little bit differently. And they had it done, and I think, I haven't talked to anybody that said they haven't enjoyed themselves here at the Cedar Rapids Ice Arena. There's a lift, and well, Iowa City West has come right on back. And I think we may get to see a little teaser. We may get to see a little later a time-lapse video of how they got all of it put together because they went from uh, hockey, I don't know if it was a tournament or a hockey game, to immediately getting the floor down on the ice and, and then putting two courts up we only have one court here today they did that into the late hours this or early hours mm -hmm. i should say this morning um but it's it takes a lot of people to get this done and so it, it's it's a team effort there you see coach pitcher again instructing his team using a lot of hand gestures which i think he's talking a few fundamentals to keep in mind here against this west team well, and basically, it, that's what it boils down to. You know, it always boils down to the fun fundamentals, and that's why practices so often consist of so many fundamental things. You know, the getting your feet to the ball, ball control in every aspect, whether it be forearm passing, overhead passing, hitting, serving, controlling the ball is the key. They go to the left. There's a block by Iowa City West. Well, you certainly have to credit that time to Hannah Enfelt. She did a nice job getting over there and closing the block. And when you have two solid blockers' hands up there for four arms and hands, it's tough to hit around. Now the defense by Iowa City West. But Gufferson blocks it back the other way. Aliyah Gufferson. Gets the point for City Eye and will come out of the game and on to serve for the Little Hawks. It'll be Caitlin Ward, the senior. I mentioned a senior. Boy, City Eye has got a lot of folks coming back. Sailor, Hubing, Reinhardt, all juniors. Michaela Nelson, a sophomore. Could be starting off next year with the number one ranking. Well, and I've been impressed this whole week with how many young kids are starting for teams. We'll see. Later today, we'll see several freshmen yeah. starting on different teams um, and, and lots of sophomores. So it just bodes well for those teams in the future. Iowa City West with the point. Anna Pushkova. So Pushkova with the set. Nice. Game. And put away. Give it to Michaela Nelson. Well, outside here, there's another one of those younger players, a sophomore, just a bullet cross that, court. That's a nice change for her. She's been trying to hit line, 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 and has been having a little bit of trouble with that line shot. And she, So she changes it up and goes sharp cross court and has some success with it. Stump is dug out by Ward. There's a battle and won by Iowa City West. The jump serve by Stump. Oh, Off the tape. Oh, what a break for the <laughs> women of Troy. I guarantee you that was not <laughs> In the, the way it was plan. supposed to be no, orchestrated, no. no doubt. There is no signal for just trickle it over the net. I did have someone ask me that one time. Do teams practice that? <laughs> no, they don't. They should practice receiving it, but no, they don't practice serving it that way. 
That would be an interesting. It would be interesting. On the schedule. Yeah. City Iowa with a point. Try and hit the net and have it trickle over. I'm not even sure how you, you could do that, but. No, I'm sure you'd find a way. Yep. There are clever people out there. Fifth kill of the match for Abby Saylor. City Eye down 14-12. Right off the nice. block. Uh -oh. oh, she tried to just simply tap it off behind her. Aaron Meir almost had a phenomenal hit. But it was called a lift. Well, and I think it stayed on her side of the net. It's hard to tell from this angle, right. but I think it stayed on her side of the net. Mira, the back set, and quickly oh, and too nice long. Oh, swing, just a little bit wide. That was a great swing by Saylor. Didn't get the right angle, and Iowa City West leading by four. And Fleeler, the setter, set it off to the left, blocked. And right there was Fairfield and Laney Whitehead. And Iowa City up. The West women of Troy, 17-12. Hey, you can't just say Iowa City. <laughs> I know, that's the tough part for us. Because it's such a hard thing, you know. Go off to Sailor. Sailor. Oh, and now the official has a conversation. Let's take a look here. I think they're going to give it to Iowa City West. Well, into, into the net, was it? He called, he called, um, it kind of looked like the back row attack signal, but she's in the front row. Um, so, but it did look like she pushed it over, so I'm not really sure. I'm, he knows his stuff, so, <laughs> you know, he's right. Oh, he had to tell the players as well. That one's down the line and down for. Because you saw her turn and say, but I'm front row. But that wasn't the call he made. So for the Little Lux, here's Abby Saylor. Stump, Fleeler, the set blocked. And out, give it to West. Boy, how about Iowa City West down 2-0, rallying, and now. Now they've got momentum going their way. But it won't stay going their way for long. There will be something that will trigger it going the other way, and it goes back and forth the entire time. Another solid block for Iowa City West. Hannah Enfeld, as well as Laney Whitehead. And they've really solidified on the sides. So we do have another timeout. Well, and that's one of the things blocking. We talk in the sport of volleyball, we talk a lot about blocking being a feast or famine sport, which means a lot of times you'll be on a roll of just block, 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 block. And then a lot of times it's, oh my gosh, I can't buy a block. And this is really proving it. The first couple sets, you know, it was kind of a famine, and now, now Iowa City West is feasting on blocks. West hanging in there, and again, a, another big lead here. So Craig Pitcher, let's see if he makes some adjustments. But a few times they've tried to line up Sailor and. Great defense by Iowa City West. And they come on out of the floor. West still serving. And for Fairfield. Well, and then there have been, you know, like there are some things like that where it's just not going your way. And so sometimes you just have to pull it back a little bit and be, you know, maybe take a little bit of the aggressive off and just make sure you get it in or make sure, you know, you just are a little bit less aggressive to, to just get the ball rolling back your way. Now when it's a tape, so back to City High. Got their work cut out for them. Well, and... I'm, I shouldn't say this because I don't want to jinx her, but Muir has a tough serve. But she, they've gotten a lot of points when she's been back there serving. Sorry, all you City, City High fans yeah. out there. The broadcasting jink applied. Shouldn't have said anything. And 
and for Iowa City West. Oh, tough one to get going. And pounded again, and there's another block. Hannah Enfeld. She's having a great third set. She really is, and, and once you get the timing of the blocking of the other team down, it, it feels like your magic. You know, if you're having all these blocks all over the place, it just feels like your magic. Go to the back set. Oh, they tried to go cross court. Unsuccessful for Liz Hubing. And 24-14. So City Eye gets their victories in the first two sets by close margins. And Iowa City West on the verge of taking the fourth. That one's put down. Nice, that was a nice strong swing by Nelson. I know Nelson turned after the last time she got black, blocked. She turned to the coaching staff and said, what, what am I doing? What's going on? So she's lost a little confidence, but that was a great confident swing, even though West was in the net. A quick set. Dug out of there nicely by Hanshi. Oh, and how about that? So 25-15, your final in this fourth set. And Iowa City West, they're right back into it. 25-15, and we're bottled up at 2-2. Two, two. And you're watching High School Championship Volleyball on KCWI and KCRG Weather Now. I'm Jeff with Lasso ERV, inviting you to check out our huge selection of travel trailers and fifth wheels by Coachman. We have a camper for everyone's wants, needs, and budget. And be sure to ask about our free outside storage. Your weekend getaway begins here with Lasso ERV. New Pioneer Food Co-op, where local really means local. When we say our breads are baked locally from scratch daily, we actually mean we mix organic flour, salt, yeast, and water with time and care. We proof, shape, and bake the dough in our own hearth oven. We cool and check each loaf for quality. At New Pie, your standards are our standards. New Pioneer, keeping it real since 1971. Sunday at 10 on KCRG TV 9. These are our neighborhoods where our kids play. We expect drivers to obey the residential speed limit, but KCRG TV 9's Nicole Agee found many do not. Going five extra miles an hour can risk somebody's life. It's just not worth it. But police tell us they're powerless to stop such speeding. KCRG TV 9 investigates why. Sunday night at 10, only on KCRG TV 9. They are not Renaissance men. My chainmail stuck in my underwear. They are not superheroes. <laughs> ow! I mean, ow! They are not playboys. Oh, I'm resplendent like the noonday sun, am I not? But they have big. Oh. Big. You really are a genius. Brains. Not really. I googled how to do that. The Big Bang Theory expands to every weeknight this fall. Weekdays at 6.30 on TV9. Come see Russ and I at our Amber location. Our certified technicians have over 50 years of RV experience. We also offer a wide range of pre-owned fifth wheels, travel trailers, and more. Your vacation destination begins here with Lasso ERV. So City High took the first two sets. Iowa City West comes charging back, and we're knotted up at two. Ryan Schlater with Barb Randall and Ken Stock. We're seeing some classic, classic volleyball right here with this the, these two classic. teams battling it out, huh? Classic volleyball. You know, you go down 2-0, two, two and you, you, you wonder what Kathy said to him in the locker room. I'm sure it was, hey, we were close, both sets close. Uh, you got to come out like you're starting brand new. So it's very exciting. I look forward to uh, set five. You good to see anything different, do you think, in this fifth? Well, and I don't see anything different. I think I see everybody come out swinging away like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You want them playing that, you know, think about it. Don't think about play to not lose, play to win, and go out there and swing away. All right, well, we're about to find out here, and they will play to 15. So forget that 20. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. you got to win by two. I wouldn't be surprised if it went to 25 again. <laughs> Me either. I mean, it, it just kind of would be perfect for, for this matchup. And let's hear it for your Little Hawks. So the Little Hawks and the women of Troy 
the 4A game. The Bishop Heelan and Waverly Shellrock fans are watching on the sidelines. I think, I think I've seen a few Western Christian and Dyke New Hartford t-shirts out and about too. Well, and I see some Waverly Shellrock colors coming in. Uh, of course, they're pulling Lamar Scaling Catholic, the 1A contest later on today. Everything you could ask for, a five game set for the Class 4A Championship. Stump, the kill. Stump's got 17 of those today. Well, that's a nice play. They ran a quick and then a higher ball right next to it. So the blockers were actually jumping with the first set, or the first tempo set that came in and couldn't jump again on that higher set. It was a nice block by Olivia Fairfield, and quite frankly, City Eye just wasn't able to recover. Anna Pashkova. City Eye, they try the left side off the block, and that means that uh, Iowa City West with a nice recovery. Too long in the shot. Well, and you know, if you if you watch kind of the demeanor of the teams, it, it kind of looks like West has gotten their swagger back. This time, Pashkova has to pass it over to Fairfi Fairfield, who dumps it over on three. There's a bullet swing by the Little Hawks, Rachel Reinhardt. Reinhardt does a really nice job on the outside for the Little Hawks. She's one of their quiet quieter players, you know, doesn't probably get a ton of attention, but she does a nice job out there for him. Back on the attack, lift over the tape. Pashkova to go down, that one's a hard hit by Olivia Fairfield. West up by one, three, two, set number five. Winner this one takes on the trophy. And the Roses. The roses, no doubt. There's a huge thing of roses. Check them out. Yeah, they're beautiful. Reinhardt serve. Down the line, the pass by Stump. They go toward the middle. There's another good swing. Boy, that's that's a, a fair great field. Set, set. Fairfield now with 12 kills. Yeah, and what a great set. I mean, that was quick. Fairfield was there. It was perfect timing. One blocker up. Nice play. Kelly Fleeler. Who, did, he, who isn't naturally a setter. She transitioned to be a setter this season. And that was City Eye with the point in your right. Kelly Fleeler uh, being asked, called upon to set after the death of Caroline Found. And we've talked uh, uh, different occasions about after the moped accident. Uh, they've been playing with a heavy heart all season and throughout this tournament. Always a spot for on the sideline as well. And that one goes down for Iowa City West. And if you see the shirts, there's the, those shirts say live like line. They called Caroline line and so the they've dedicated the season to her and this match will be emotional no matter what happens. Fairfield serve on the line. That one's dumped over on three by Hannah Enfeld. Enfeld heads up play there. She saw nobody was back in that corner. Rather than set it up for someone to hit and, and the defense on the other side to, to get in place, she just sent it over to a hole. 6-4 West. A serve. Craig Pitcher for Iowa City. City High wants a timeout. West 7, City I 4. We, we had two close ones in the first two, 25-23 and 29-27. And then, you know, it's been, I don't want to say essentially all Iowa City West, but we talked about finishing, and that's what West did in sets three and four. Well, and they really have come out. Their backs were against the wall, and, and they've really performed well because of it. Michaela Nelson, 16 kills thus far in this one. 13 for Reinhardt. Stump leading the team with 17 for Iowa City West. We mentioned the strong effort by Olivia Fairfield. 
12 today. And Fairfield serves. And for Fairfield, nice just over the yeah. line. The back set at this is Gustafson. That one's put down. I wasn't sure that serve was even going to make it oh. over the net. That one seemed to drop a little curveball yeah. to it. Ashkova passes Fleeler, and Stump dumps it over. They back set it to the right. Wow. You can see Michaela Nelson and the angle here, no defenders. Well, and it was a great swing, but the ball barely nicked the antenna. Oh, well, they're going to call it out, yep. And the, ref, the down ref also called that she was under the net. So either way, it was going to be against City High. Eli Gustafson, the junior. Another solid swing to keep City High alive. West 8, City High 6. And for the Libro, Shepard. Nice swing. <laughs> Stump says, oh yeah. You know, you wonder if these kids are tired after, you know, emotional matches every day this week. And you see a swing like that and you think, nope, there's no way they're tired. What a great, strong swing. Whitehead's out, Olivia Meckies on to serve. Meckies, a black back row player. Gusterson, oh, they call it out. Oh, well, off the, the tip, yep, that's a city eye point. Kathy Bresnahan for Iowa City West doesn't like that call, but the call was made by the line judge on the other on the other end. I, and he, and I, I thought it was tough to tell. There could have been a touch, and it, there could have been no touch. They're right there on the spot. Fleeler. Now it's tapped over by Enfield. There's the I'm, Little Hawks. And that time I thought it looked like there was a touch. So it's hard to tell from from my perspective. Maybe I need a new prescription too. <laughs> Call it as you see it, I guess. Yep. There's a pass by Mason, dumped over the net. And fell for City Eye. Off the block, played up by Iowa City West. They'll try the left side, stump. Goes over the block, kept alive, pushed over the net. And City Eye stuck with it. And, and they'll get the point. And that's why we were talking about playing until you hear the whistle and playing if you're in doubt. That's why you continue playing because it, you, you never know what's going to be called. Some people look like it was down on the floor, but apparently none of those were officials. Kathy Bresnahan calls for a timeout. She did talk to the floor official, and now she's uh, indicating on the far side and thinking that yeah, she maybe something like that should have been called. Yep. All right, we're, we'll get another look at it, see who is right. Uh, I'd call it the way it was called. <laughs> I, I'd still give it to City Eye on that one, I mean, even at least for the effort. I, I couldn't see anything different. So in your mind, if we had replay, it wasn't enough to overturn. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the no, football rule? It has yeah. to be. It, Obvious enough oh, that it would overturn the We're not the going there, the that's field. for sure. But regardless, it was a, a great play by City High. And oh, now a closer replay. Because I didn't see it the way Ryan saw it. So I saw it hit her hand and then the floor. Yeah, I think it hit the floor. No, that was part of the backside if of it, her palm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that is part of the sport of volleyball, too. And, and generally, the ball... That it has justice, you know, and so generally the next point you always just say, well, I guess that is the way it should have been, or whatever, whichever way the ball goes. Abby Saylor pounds it, but off the block and out of bounds, which gives it to Iowa City West, leading it 10 to 9. Winner needs 15 points and to win by two. Oh, and that's going to be going down for Michaela Nelson. Everybody looked at the officials yeah. to see. Well, it's not, you can't always tell if there's a touch on the block from all the angles. That's why we have officials placed at all these angles, because it's hard to tell. Too long. Olivia Fairfield. 
11-10. Serving is Michaela Nelson. Down the line, too long. And that's a, that's a good play. Uh, number three, Molly Mason, wanted to play that ball, and at the last minute she thought, oh, I think it's going out, and pulled her hands down. Great She pull. knew where she yes. had to be. Great pull. Step with the serve. They back set it down to the right side. Nice dig out of there by Olivia Meckes. Free ball over by Stump. This time they'll go to the far side. Off to Kierman down. Rachel Reinhardt. Key offensive play for the Little Hawks, and they convert. 12-11. Too long. Coach Bresnahan was ready to play that <laughs> one. Mickey's comes out, Whitehead comes in. Nice serve. New front row player at the back set. A little bit of miscommunication there, so they couldn't set anything up offensively. Boshkova keeps it alive. Nope. Net foul on West. Yep, got too close. The assist to Mueller, point City High. So City High, two away. 13-12 timeout. This is what state volleyball is all about. You think you might have it, you don't have it until you have it. That's right, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what this is all about. Ha, you know, half the time one side of the gym is just going nuts and the other half is, the, is quiet. And then the, two could, minutes later, it's yeah. the other way around. You could so throw some other sports out there when you have a big lead. Means nothing in state volleyball. The women of Troy at 38 and 6. The Little Ox at 40 and 3. The third meeting between these two squads out of the Mississippi Valley Conference. It, Same school district, the Iowa City Community School District. It looks like they're trying to get the wave going, but it looks like it's uh, Waverly Shell Rock fans, but it might be Bishop Heelan. I can't tell if it's navy or black, but. They're mixing in with the with the city. Well, you're it's not like going to yeah. be able to tell with your prescription that you need. <laughs> but yeah, the black and the gold, it looks like to me, which are good colors, is mixed in with the red and the white. Good call. Hey, that, that was a little bit close to be letting go Boy, from my perspective. I, I thought for a second there that it was an ace serve. Good eye on very your close. part. Yeah, very good. 13-13. Fairfield, they'll set it back to the left side. It gets through. You know, that is a really smart play by Hubing. They've been hammering the ball all day, and they know the line's open. She didn't quite have her feet to the ball where it was set, and so she just tips it to a spot that's been open for her all day, and it, nice, smart play. Mix it up a little. Championship point net serve. Aaron Muir just stretches out. Says my bad, and you go back to work. That's right. Keep dig dig a little deeper. 14-14, Molly Mason. And for Mason, pass. It was over. Well, we're going to call the violation. That's a tough call because I don't think she was above the height of the net. You have to, okay, on that call, when you're back row, you cannot send the ball over if you're above the height of the net. Right. She punched it with her fist. I don't think she was above the height. She's, she's pretty little. So to me, it didn't look like she was above the height of the net, but that is a, that's a judgment call, and it's a tough one to make. But what she should have tried to do is just tried to act like she was front row and <laughs> stayed up there. To, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, Iowa City West now, <laughs> championship point. 15-14, got to win by two. City I won the first two. Iowa City West won the last two. Nice hat. Is this the kind of afternoon we're going to have? I think it is. There's a nice hat by that, that guy right there. So the women of Troy. We all did. I think we all predicted five. this match would go five sets. Mason with the serve. They set it off the left side. And through! <laughs> And, Michaela Nelson. And one of us predicted it may go to 25 still. And it might. 18 kills for Michaela Nelson. Laura Shepard. 
Back row specialist will serve. Stump tries to get it over the row. They go left. Off the carom, played up by Iowa City West. Cleeler goes to the opposite side, dumped over by Stump. Nice dig out of there. And the free ball over. Here comes Iowa City West, so go left side. Stump pounds it and through. And a 16-15 lead. And another championship point. You know, this is tough as a coach because you want to be excited and, and be positive for your team, but you also have to kind of be calm for your team. And it's, it's fun to watch these coaching staffs as well as the players. And Iowa City West for Stump. Not yet. The back set to the right and off the carom. Nice. Still played up. Oh, what a play on the right <laughs> side, and we're still going at it. 16-16. That's a, you know, the play that saved that was that cover play by Reinhardt. She was in the right spot, ready to play that ball up, and that's key because West is doing a great job blocking right now. Oh, no. Net serve. That's too bad. You know, I hate to see when, when kids miss plays like that at a big time in the match. I just, it just kills me. I mean, it doesn't make me mad. I just feel bad for them. Poshkova for the championship match point. They send it off to the left side. And a nice dig out of there by Molly Mason. Stump dumped over. It's down! They've done it! Once again! And the championship to the women of Troy! And it means so much to them this year. They won last year too, but this year's championship just means so much more with the loss that Caroline found. And we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Jeff with Lasso ERV, inviting you to check out our huge selection of travel trailers and fifth wheels by Coachman. We have a camper for everyone's wants, needs, and budget. And be sure to ask about our free outside storage. Your weekend getaway begins here with Lasso ERV. New Pioneer Food Co-op, where local really means local. When we say our breads are baked locally from scratch daily, we actually mean we mix organic flour, salt, yeast, and water with time and care. We proof, shape, and bake the dough in our own hearth oven. We cool and check each loaf for quality. At New Pie, your standards are our standards. New Pioneer, keeping it real since 1971. End your evenings with a smile on your face. It's the Last Laugh Comedy Block, only on KCRG 9.2. The fun starts with Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday through Saturday at 9.30. Then hang out with friends at 10 every night. Stay tuned for the King of Queens at 10.30. Laugh along with Two and a Half Men at 11.05. And finish the evening with The Big Bang Theory at 11.35. The Last Laugh Comedy Block, every night on KCRG 9.2. This week, a legend and friend says goodbye. That's you. You're kidding me. I miss you. I know. <laughs> Reaches his final five shows with David Letterman, Donald Trump, Kathy Lee Gifford, Tony Bennett, and more surprises. It all starts Monday with Don Rickles and Jimmy Fallon. It's Regis's final week. I, I mean, I speak for all of us when I say I couldn't love you more. Monday at 9 on KCRG TV 9. Come see Russ and I at our Amber location. Our certified technicians have over 50 years of RV experience. We also offer a wide range of pre-owned fifth wheels, travel trailers, and more. Your vacation destination begins here with Lasso ERV. Beth Malicki, only on KCRG TV9. Already an emotional afternoon here as Iowa City West wins the Class 4A championship by winning the Fifth set, 18-16. Kathy Bresnahan sharing some hugs up in the stands with Caroline Bounds' family, the father. This has been the song that they've played all year after all the matches. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to make the all-tournament team presentation. Making the presentation will be Todd Glenn and Karen Brown. Now the, the announcement of the all-tournament team. Of the Class 4A all-tournament team from Iowa City City High, Rachel Reinhardt.
Well deserved. From Iowa City West, Olivia Fairfield. <laughs> she got caught up from in Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Alexis Rogers. From Ankeny, Maddie Manning. From Iowa City City High, Michaela Nelson. And your Class 4A All-Tournament Team Captain from Iowa City West, Shelly Stump. Nice job by all those players. Well deserved. So Stump the captain. Kayla Nelson also a fine tournament. <laughs> and they're singing happy birthday to her. I really <laughs> do think it's her birthday. What an emotional day. Presenting Boy, the 4A if this is going to be <laughs> Any inkling of what we're going to have Fun the day. rest of the day. Even City Eye, I mean, tears of sadness right Presenting now. Presenting the 4A Awards, a Girls Athletic Union Board of they know Directors, the emotion Todd that's involved. Wentz, Chris Prelwitz, Carol Greta, Kevin Elwood, Tom Kinseth. At this time, we'd like to present the runner-up award to the Iowa City City High Little Hawks and head coach Craig Pilcher. They had a good tournament. It's painful right now, but maybe one day it will mean something a little bit more to them. And now, your 2011 4A champions, Coach Kathy Bresnahan and the, West, the women of Troy from Iowa City West. Champion Iowa City West, women of Troy. Twenty-three, twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-nine, twenty-five, sixteen, twenty-five, fifteen, eighteen, sixteen. To take on the roses and the trophy. Iowa City West fans, welcome home reception will be at three p.m. today. Winning a championship a year ago is one thing, but this one's pretty special. Yeah, this one's this one's probably more emotional. Well, it's not probably. There's no probably about it, but I'm sure they're all special. Oh, anybody within the volleyball community, there's no uh, question about that. But as we recap this one here, uh, Barb, both both times here, I think. Uh, Really head at it. We'll talk more about this match a little bit uh, later on, but uh, let's have a visit right now with our own Ken Stock. Jay Grassley, the, the first referee. Uh, Jay, it's a special day for the players and coaches to, to make it to a state championship game. What's this mean to you as an official? Well, for us, it's a chance to. We officiate all over the state. We get to see people from other parts of the state, so that's really enjoyable for us. Um, two teams I do get to see a little bit during the regular season, but I officiated matches last weekend or uh, earlier in the week. Two teams I never get to see. So I get to see uh, stuff, uh, volleyball from all across the state, and it's an honor to be selected. Uh, the coaches rank us and rate us, and, and then the girls' union determines who gets to come. So it's also an honor for us to, quote, unquote, make it to state. Absolutely. I know it's a great feeling. And, and have you been in many matches much like this, a state championship, uh, Iowa City West down 2-0, come back and win it in five? I, I've called, I've called, it's about my third or fourth state championship that I've called. Um, I, 
this, a situation like that, I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but that's one of those where, you know, a 2-0 and to come back and, and win that way. And those guys do battle all year long. And, and there's a lot of close friendships from town from uh, just being so close and knowing each other in the school. And so uh, it, it's just a neat situation to, to be involved in a match like that. And I appreciate the union giving me that opportunity. And those kids are close. And, and again, I appreciate that opportunity the union's given me. How long have you been uh, officiating volleyball? And uh, what got you into volleyball? Well, I actually play a lot. Uh, I coach a lot. Uh, got involved with the University of Northern Iowa. And uh, so I've been coaching about 20 years, 22 years now, or refereeing 22 years, and uh, enjoy that. So, Well, that was Jay Grassley, uh, first referee for today's 4A State Championship. And we'll be back in just a moment. Thousands of girls have experienced it before them. Thousands of girls will experience it after them. But now is their time. Experience the excitement along with these young women and support the continuing success of the Iowa Girl. Now your 24-hour news source is with you wherever you go. Introducing KCRG TV9 News Mobile, featuring advanced weather tools including live first alert pinpoint Doppler radar, the seven-day forecast, and every city cam in our network. Plus local and national news, local events, ESPN news, and more. Just visit m.kcrg.com from your phone. KCRG TV9 News Mobile, brought to you by Depaco Community Credit Union. They are not renaissance men. My chain mail stuck in my underwear. They are not superheroes. <laughs> ow! I mean, ow! They are not playboys. Oh, I'm resplendent like the noonday sun, am I not? But they have big... Oh. Big... Wow, you really are a genius. Brains. Not really. I googled how to do that. The Big Bang Theory expands to every weeknight this fall. Weekdays at 6.30 on TV9. KCRG TV9 and the Gazette, the most comprehensive election coverage in eastern Iowa. From when the first polls opened to the last vote cast, you watched your vote count from city elections to state senate. You stayed informed online, on air, and in the Gazette with live reports, updated stories, and victory speeches. Complete election coverage only from KCRG TV9 and the Gazette. Brian Schlater, Barb Randall back at the Ice Arena in Cedar Rapids. A thrilling victory for the Iowa City West women of Troy. Taking it in five. Three to two, the final. Emotional win that's gonna be talked about in years to come here throughout. And boy, what a grueling match. And close in the first two, Iowa City West seemed to start to pick away and I think uh, started to have some distance but that fifth uh, set was certainly thrilling I mean we saw some good action here tonight we really did both teams really wanted this and they went after it hard and you know Iowa City City High can't be too disappointed I know it's always tough to lose especially when you're up 2-0 but they hadn't they hadn't beaten Iowa City West yet this year and they they played their best against them and and uh, West just out out stood them that's not really the right word, but they they just <laughs> persevered. Yes. Exactly, and hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, visit with the coach at Bresnahan a little bit later on. But uh, throughout, they ended up getting some key victories, a few losses that uh, put them back a little bit here. But they expected to be here. They got here. They got the championship game in. And same for City I. I don't think anybody was surprised that the two teams would. Uh, go at it here today for the finals. I'm not quite sure if everybody thought this contest would be uh, so close. You thought maybe somebody would run away with it at some point. Somebody would run out of gas. That didn't happen by any means. Well, and it's nice when at the very end of the season, you have the first and second ranked teams playing against each other. And it's even neater when they're from the same community. That, that you know, adds a little something to it for everyone. Here's some key plays by Iowa City West. And 
You know, we saw their front line play very well, especially uh, Stump got in there. He had some excellent swings uh, throughout the game. Shelly Stump, just a, a tremendous player. And Olivia Fairfield really came through there late in the get-go as well. Well, and, you know, it was kind of like you mentioned earlier. When, when Stump was on, the, the team was on. She's kind of their their uh, fireball. You know, when, when she's doing things well, they were usually winning. And, and so... Um, that was that was kind of interesting to watch. Fairfield did a nice job in the middle. Uh, Fleeler did a nice job for her first year of setting. You know, it's tough to set some of those critical quick sets in the middle, and Fleeler did a great job of, of distributing the ball and getting everybody a lot of kills. All right, so 4A comes to a conclusion. We'll have the 3A coming up. We'll still have some more time to talk some more Iowa High School State Championship Volleyball. You're watching High School Championship Volleyball on KCWI and KCRG Weather Now. Sunday at 10 on KCRG TV 9. These are our neighborhoods where our kids play. We expect drivers to obey the residential speed limit, but KCRG TV 9's Nicole Agee found many do not. Going five extra miles an hour can risk somebody's life. It's just not worth it. But police tell us they're powerless to stop such speeding. KCRG TV 9 investigates why. Sunday night at 10, only on KCRG TV 9. We couldn't be more pleased with uh, here's the deal. It worked out so well. We sold close to 400. Um, we see new guests almost every single day, and it, it's really, really fun. Our account representative has been fantastic. She got us involved. Uh, we've done it twice now and really, really loved it. I think uh, the program is outstanding. To advertise on KCRG, go to KCRG.com. Click on Connect With Us, then click on Advertise With Us. KCRG TV 9, the results station. End your evenings with a smile on your face. It's the Last Laugh Comedy Block, only on KCRG 9.2. The fun starts with Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday through Saturday at 9.30. Then hang out with friends at 10 every night. Stay tuned for the King of Queens at 1030. Laugh along with two and a half men at 1105 and finish the evening with the Big Bang Theory at 1135. The last laugh comedy block every night on KCRG 9.2. When news happens, trust one team. Bruce Owney and Beth Malicki watching out for you, investigating the questions, finding the answers, leading news coverage, keeping you informed. Dedication guaranteed. Bruce Owney and Beth Malicki. Only on your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9. The Class 4A State Championship goes to the Iowa City West women at Troy. Let's check in with Ken Sock. I'm with Marv Ryland, the athletic director at Iowa City West. Marv, what a special day, state championship as athletic director, activities director. You're kind of a coach of, of all the sports. What's this mean to you today? I tell you, this one means a lot. It really does. Uh, as we talked earlier, you know, this was one of the best championship matches, I think, in the history of girls volleyball. And we were lucky enough to be a part of it with our rivals across town, City High, and, you know, both teams put it on the line. You couldn't ask for anything any better than that. And for our kids and coaches, uh, what they've been through, it's just, it's unbelievable. And to see them hang in there and pull it out, it's very gratifying, it really is. It was an emotional win today, and I know uh, Kathy had her team ready to play. Being down uh, two sets to zero right away, what did you see as a key that, that changed that? Well, they have a lot of heart, and they just kept playing hard. And uh, once we got our blocks going, uh, you know, that changed the complexion of the game or the match a little bit. And I think once uh, we started using that as much as we did, uh, City High started second-guessing a little bit. But uh, what a great match. What a great way to end the season. Well, thank you, Marv. Appreciate your time. And, and what a great match. Iowa City West winning uh, the 4A match 3-2 uh, to two over City High. And back to you. All right, and we'll be back right after this. This week, a legend and friend says goodbye. 
miss you. You're kidding me. I miss you. I <laughs> Regis's final five shows with David Letterman, Donald Trump, Kathy Lee Gifford, Tony Bennett, and more surprises. It all starts Monday with Don Rickles and Jimmy Fallon. It's Regis's final week. I, I mean, I speak for all of us when I say I couldn't love you more. Monday at 9 on KCRG TV 9. We're talking sports, so join us at Capone's every Monday night at 6.30 for On Iowa Live. Come on down and be part of the live audience. Or cast us on KCRG 9.2. Or live streamed on KCRG.com. We'll even take sports questions from the audience and by Twitter. So join us each Monday at Capone's to talk sports and more. On Iowa Live, brought to you by Capone's Restaurant and Hideaway Bar in Cedar Rapids. On the next Big Bang Theory, their cold and lonely nights are over. Oh, thank God we're home. I can't believe we spent three months in that frozen hell. I don't know what Arctic expedition you guys were on, but I thought it was a hoot and a half. And it's getting hot in here. Leonard, you're back. Yeah, I just stopped by to say... <laughs> Damn it, I should have gone over and told her we were back. <laughs> yeah, it was first come, first serve. Next Big Bang. Monday at 6.30 on KCRG TV 9. It's for you, Hawkeye fans. KCRG TV 9's countdown to kickoff. All season long, only KCRG TV 9 tees it up live a half hour before home games. We're even on KCRG.com with player and super fan profiles, team previews, analysis by the TV 9 sports team, and guests like the Gazette's Mark Morehouse and Mike Halas. Tune in early for the Hawkeye news you want. Countdown to kickoff. Off, live on KCRG TV 9. So a very thrilling class 4A championship game. We head on to the 3A game. Bishop Heelan out of Sioux City. The Crusaders taking on the Wever Waverly Shell Rock Gohawks for the 3A state championship. I'm Ryan Slater along with uh, Barb Randall. So we'll take you through that game a little bit later on. And for uh, Bishop Healing, I'll uh, tell you what. Another team that is used to being in Cedar Rapids during November, Waverly Shell Rock. I think they're starting to get accustomed to it. Three considerate, uh, consecutive uh, straight appearances. Well, and they're the champions from last year. So um, they they know what it takes to get here, too, and, and they're, they don't want it to stop it at this match. All right. We got more state championship volleyball coming up. We'll be back right after this. Nick Cannon is kicking off our five alarm cookoff. These guys are big, so I'm gonna just step back. As five New York City firefighters representing all five boroughs. There's a few things you don't see in your borough. Good food and <laughs> fires, all right? Take their rivalry to our kitchen. You guys will stand a chance. Then Cannon's getting candid about wife Mariah and the twins. My daughter was born first, and she's a diva, so she had her hand up like that. Next, Rachel. Monday at 3 on KCRG TV 9. A brand new commitment to you. KCRG Weather Now. Eastern Iowa weather 24 hours a day. At the core, weather on the nines. Live pinpoint Doppler radar plus the first alert forecast. Along with local, regional, and national information. Around the edges, conditions for towns across Eastern Iowa. Stay safe and informed with KCRG Weather Now on Digital 9.3, Mediacom 110, I'm on 710, and always on KCRG.com. I'm proud to call home Iowa, my home where I belong. All across this state of mine, hear my heartfelt song. A state of God's graced acres, you're my state of mind. Iowa, my Iowa, you're my home, you're my pride. Iowa, my Iowa, where hearts are proud and true. The spirit of your people runs deep in all you do. Iowa, my Iowa, rich TV 9's always there for you. John Campbell, only on KCRG TV 9. 